What's up guys? I'm back and this video as you can tell by the title we're gonna be doing my top fall baits the baits that I feel that do the best in fall and this is gonna be covering from the beginning of the fall which is the fall transition that's when it's summer and it goes in the fall and we're gonna talk about the middle of the fall what baits like to throw there and then the end so we'll just get into it now the first thing I'm gonna start off by is top water. This this is a head and spook. Um, you can throw a bunch of top water. A bunch of top water works. I like whopper ploppers. That's been really good to me. Poppers I haven't done as well on them. But I still have caught fish. But my number one for the fall is definitely a spook. And I would mostly go with a shad type pattern. It also depends on the lake you're fishing. If it has bluegill or shad or whatever you whatever kind of forge you have, that's what you kind of want to match. It's called match to hatch. So if you have bluegill, I would do a bluegill style top water, something like that. If you have shad, a white or bone colored top water, and that'll usually get you those key those extra bites. I would throw this along the any remaining grass that you have in the lake. There's really not going to be too much. But the, any remaining grass that's alive still, throw this through it. Don't worry, it really it won't get hung up. You'll get a couple strands, but that's fine. Uh, throw this around wood, but in the backs of coves. Fish are gonna start moving into the backs of coves, and this is gonna be a big money. That's gonna that's gonna be a big player. Next for moving baits also is a square bill crankbait. I've done extremely well on this as well as long as the next one I'm going to be showing you guys. The square bill crankbait is by far one of my favorites when it comes to fall fishing. And this one I've done really well on. As you can tell in the video clip as, as I'm putting in here right now. Um, this right here is a Lucky Craft. I believe it's a 1.0 or 1.5 uh, size. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure the color either. I'll I'll link it down in the description. But it's it's a shad pattern. And I've done really, really well on this the fall in the fall. And I feel this is probably the second or third best beat you can throw. Now, this is when the fish are moving in the backs of the coves also. They're, they're moving up shallow and they're chasing shad. Or bluegill. Again, it's whatever kind of forage you have in your lake. Um, but this just plays a really good player. Next, what I think I've done the best on so far in my years of fishing when it's fall fishing is a chatterbait. For some reason here in New Jersey, I've done really, really well on a chatterbait. And this, this is a little smaller than your average. Most people are going to be using a three eighths to half ounce. I personally like those tinier style chatterbaits even all year long. But in the fall especially, this is a quarter ounce Z-Man Chatterbait. This is the original. And this is in chartreuse and white. Again, match the hatch. Whatever kind of forge you have in your lake, that's what color you're going to want to throw. But for me, this has been the best. I throw a little paddle tail style swim bait on the back. This right here happens to be the Reaction Innovations Little Dipper. And uh, I believe this color is called White Trash. And again, just matching the hash. And then this is thrown. You, I honestly throw this everywhere. I throw this the most. So I'm throwing it around, uh, around docks, grass, the remaining grass, wood, and sometimes in the backs of coves. Usually I'll go for the square bill or the spook in the backs of coves. It just depends on, you know, you got to kind of get a feel for what the fish are biting. Top water, obviously, for the morning. And then the square bill for later in the day. But uh, the Charby has been a really good player to me in the uh, past four years. Now we're going to do the jig. The jig has been really good to me um, as well. Not as... It, it catches a lot of fish. Don't get me wrong. It catches a lot of fish. And with this, you're going to be catching the bigger fish. The more bigger than average size fish. And this right here is the Santone Lures um, Finesse Jig. Uh, I think this is Green Pumpkin Green or something around like that color. It's an amazing jig. I love these jigs. The Finesse uh, finesse Jigs, they're amazing. 
This is, I believe, five sixteenths of an ounce. I'll, I'll put everything here in the description below. But um, I believe this is five sixteenths of an ounce. And the trailer that I use is, in the fall, I don't want a real um, erratic trailer. I want something that's going to not give as much motion off. And that's when I usually go for the Berkeley Cheer Crawl. I, I love these little little crawls, especially on the back, because they don't give off that much action. But they still get um, a lot of bites. This is the 3-inch version. Now, what you do is you get your jig and your crawl. How to rig this. Go up. And you just slide it down. So it's like that. Perfect. And that's what it's going to look like. Make sure you rip your appendages off. And that's what it's going to look like. A perfect little snack for a bass. Now, this has been really good. Again, throw this around docks. Skip it under docks. Um, I, I wouldn't throw this in the grass. I would throw this around some um, wood, some trees if you have it, stuff like that. And if you have rocks, this is when I would throw this most of the time if you have rocks. Because in the fall, crawfish like to scatter along the rocks. So... This is a perfect imitator for that. Next is one of probably the best out of all these I've thrown my years of fit in my years of fishing in the fall has to be the Berkeley Havoc Pit Boss. I don't know what it is. I've had a lot. I've had I've caught fish on plenty of other baits, but this has been what caught me the big fish. I caught my PB on this, and it's. This is just a really, really good bait. Um, I generally go for the 4-inch size pit moss, Berkeley Havoc pit moss. Now I'm power bait. But um, that, this is what I usually use. And this is in Okeechobee Crawl. I've done the best in this color, Okeechobee Crawl. But again, match what you have. This is usually the best. In my opinion, this is the best color for any type of situation because it... Gen it imitates a bluegill because if you can see it has the black and blue and it has green pumpkin in with it. So 4 inch Havoc Pit Boss in Oak Tribute Roll. And what I would use is a, for the hook, I would use a flipping hook. This is a 4 aught um, Berkeley Fusion hook. You can use Berkeley Fusion, Gamagatsu, VMC, whatever, whatever kind of hook you like. But this is a 4 aught. I like these because it has this little bait keeper on it, and I find these hooks are very sharp as well. These don't really dull. See, it's getting caught on my nail, but yeah, these are these are really good hooks. And rig it however you. Well, that's a Texas rig, so you want to go here, at, in through the head, out, slide up. Turn it around. Now, what I do, and I teach all beginner fishermen, people who are just getting into fishing, what to do is measure, lay, lay the hook right there. Like, see how the hook is just laying on the bait. And what I tell them is put your thumb right where the hook is at the bottom of the hook. So right there. And go in, wherever that is laying. So I'm going to get my thumb right there. It's going to go right there. And there you go. Now, a lot of people get scared about using a flipping hook. Because look, it's the hook is not exposed. It's not catching my finger. And that's what you want. Don't be scared because, trust me, I was the same way a while back. And it really doesn't affect your fishing. Um, you don't want it to be exposed. And I don't think it really matters that much. I actually like the flipping hook. A lot more now than an EWG because I feel like you get better hookups but um yeah so don't be afraid to cover that hook point so it doesn't get exposed next the bobber what I also use is bobber stops these are Wu Tungsten bobber stops I always peg my weights and flipping and whatever I'm going to use if I'm using a weight I always peg it I rarely ever um not peg anything that's Texas rigged and then your weight, I use tungsten weights. Uh, these are Wu Tungsten tungsten weights. By far the best out there. They don't chip. 
and they're fairly inexpensive. This right here, I like to usually do, I, I'm the type of fisherman, I like the, um, tinier style weights, so I like, you know, 3 sixteenths, a quarter, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, stuff like that. In the fall, I usually go in, um, lower in the weights, so the fall is a lot slower. That's generally, generally, I do better with that, so, yeah, that's what, that's what I like. And then I'm going to use like 15 pound line for that. Same with the jig, same with the chara bait. Uh, crankbait, I'll, it really really depends on what I'm fishing around. I'll use 12 to 15 pound. And the spook, which is the top one, I'll use bream. Now, um, another thing is a senko. Senkos, they just work. All around, all year round, they, senkos just work. These are um, power baits, the general stick baits. And... I just like to use these Texas rigs without a weight. I found Senkos are a lot better. Uh, four aught hook, EWG, whatever brand you like to use. And just throw that around. If you're in shallow water, that's when I usually go for that. If you're around grass, I'll go for that. But um, I really like those. And finally is the drop shot. Drop shots work all year round. Um, in the fall, I would usually use these later when it's going into winter. I found to use these, that these work best drop shots. Um, these are max scent flatworms. These work really well. Um, any finesse worm you want to use works really well. Um, I use for the weight, uh, Wu Tungsten again, their drop shot weight. I use, um, I'm actually kind of weird with that. I like a heavier drop shot weight so I know it's on the bottom right away and that's how I feel I get more of my bites. So heavier weight, so like a quarter, three eighths to a half. And the hook is, I've actually been experimenting with this hook and I really, really like it. It's a ro uh, rebar hook by um, Gamagatsu. I really love this hook. Amazing hook. I The hookup ratio on that is amazing. And I find that a lot better than just a regular drop shot. Unless you're fishing like really clear water like the Saint, Lake St. Clair or Lake Champlain, then I'll use a regular drop shot hook. But when I'm fishing that, especially around cover and grass, I have no, no grass getting on my baits. It's perfect, I love it, and the hookups are amazing. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's gonna be it. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe. I'm coming back to YouTube. It's been a, uh, it's, it's been a while since I was on here, so I'm, I'm back. I have a tournament video I'm going to be filming. No, I'm not in it. Um, it's Adrian Avina's. I'm sure I'm going to have this out before the weekend, but it's um, the youth event that they that he hosts every year. FL, uh, MLF Pro, Adrian Avina holds the uh, South Island Park Youth Tournament every year. It's this year, I can look at it real quick. Uh, I believe it's September, September 28th. So it's this Saturday, September 28th, and it's a really good event. It's for the kids. It's to get them into fishing. This event is what got me into fishing, like really into fishing. Meeting him can inspire so many different people like me and I would just bring your kids out I'll leave the address stuff all the information in the description below calm down have fun talk to him talk to me and just bring your kids out it's it's a seven dollar tournament and they get to have fun catch fish win 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 some prizes so like why not so I'll put all that in the description below and I'll be filming there. I'll also be filming. So if you see me, say hi. And uh, that, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys like, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, like I already said. And I'll see you guys next time on South Jersey Fishing.